As a private investigator, you take the cases you can get. It usually means long nights following scumbags to sleazy motels and taking photos too distasteful even for TMZ. Sometimes the scumbag runs. You have to chase him into the sewer where your socks get wetter than a deli sandwich that soaked up all the leaky pickle juice. Guess that's how I found myself on this crappy case. Standing in crap-filled water. Facing down a piece of crap criminal for a paycheck. It wouldn't be worth crap to a crap. If you think that sounds like too much crap, imagine how I feel. I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! Then why are you doing this to me? Because that's what I do. I bring down bad guys. In this case, that's you. Besides, I know your wife isn't dead. She hired me to find out if you... Yeah. If you sold her parrot. Which you did, because you're a pile of crap. Which is why we're down here. I have photos. You don't understand. That bird drove me crazy with its constant squawking. I, I didn't hurt the thing. I just found it a new home. Oh, well, now you're going to find a new home in the big house. Or pay a small fine and be on your way. Wait, so the murder investigation I was hearing about on the police scanner wasn't about me? Ooh, is that an OTR 160 band police scanner? Oh man, if I had one of those, I could get a leg up on the real crimes before they all get picked over. No more dumb, lame gigs involving fake crabs or goat statues or bird nappers. You could solve me a bona fide murder case. Hand it over or I'll... Oh! Ah! Oh crap, that was an accident. Tell you what, uh, help me find that radio you just dropped and maybe we can work something out. Okay, yeah. Ooh, a quarter. Okay, that's alive. Whatever that was. I feel a, a boot. Ooh, what size? Uh, feels like at least a men's seven and a half, which would be a women's nine and a half. Uh, and in the UK, uh, 44, 43. Wait! Don't try to distract me. Keep looking for the scanner. Nada. Yeah, nothing but gross water. Are you even helping? I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, nope, that's something mushy and disgusting. Which, to be fair, in the sewer pipe is pretty on brand. <sighs> Nothing here either. I found it! Great, give it here! Okay, but you said we could trade, right? Radio for photos. Sure, that's what I said, all right. Okay, here you go. Now, the photos? Okay, a deal's a deal. Just let me get them for you. I've just got to click on my inventory. Looks like it's your lucky day. Or maybe I just don't like bird pics. Either way, take your photos. Get out of here. No, no, no! Oops. All officers in the vicinity report to public playground at the corner of Scarlet and River. There's been a murder. <laughs> Sweet! This is gonna be so good. <clears throat> I mean, just another night in this gin-soaked town. And murder is the chaser. Crime. You're a private investigator, it toils away at you like a grain of sand in your eye. You can't see it, but you know it's there. And the more you scratch at it, the worse it gets. 
but you have to keep scratching until you get it out or you go blind trying. In this case, was about to throw a fistful of sand right in my face. Sorry, sir. This is a crime scene. Please step away. It's okay. I have a, a police scanner. Also, I'm a private eye. Or a public M. Depending on how much of my backstory you're familiar with. Name's Nick Bounty. I have a few questions for you. Looks like you got a hell of a mess in your hands. What happened here? Dead body. Some kids were playing in the sandbox when they discovered her. Naked? No, they were all fully dressed. But the clothes on the victim had been torn off. The victim? Who was she? Don't know yet. We didn't find any ID on her. Once we get her down to the morgue, we can run her prints and see if she's in the system. Who's the unsub? The what? The unknown subject? Isn't that how you say it? Oh, that's stupid. We just say suspect like everyone else. Ah, got it. Who's the suspect, then? Don't have one yet. The boys down the station think this is probably a suicide. Suicide? Really? Yep, and they're pretty much wrapped up here. Now you're welcome to take a look around. Just don't touch the body. Why not? Because that's like gross. It's all cold and icky. Ugh. Just wait until we can bring it to the morgue for proper processing. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to have a look around. That's some set of sticks for a dead dame. Sticks? Gams. What are gams? Stems. Like plant stems? Pins, drumsticks, pillars, stilts, uprights, getaway sticks. I don't... Forget it, kid. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, she's got nice legs, though. sand over here is wet. Yeah, we noticed that too. Smells like... <laughs> oh, piss. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's the same reason I avoid public pools. Kids tend to use them as their own personal toilets. I'm never going in a sandbox again. Uh, unless it's uh, on a case or, or a date. I'm going to avoid them in general, though. Hello, little spider. Spider? I hate spiders! Phew! Well, that was close. A little extreme, but... Okay. What's the deal with you and spiders? Little eight-legged dudes aren't that scary. It's not the legs that creep me out. It's the eight eyes. Why do they need so many eyes? What the hell are they looking at? What are you still doing here? That's the question, isn't it? What are any of us doing here? No, I mean, here at the playground. Oh, I've got to stay and protect the body until the medical examiner comes to pick it up. That's all for now. I'm going to go look for more evidence. Ooh, a quarter. Murmur, murmur, mumble, murmur. What are you doing? Just murmuring. Makes it look like we're talking in the background. Ahem. Hey, look, girl. It's Nick Bounty, the city's most prolific dog walker. <laughs> I'm not a dog walker. I'm a detective. 
Didn't you see my radio? Detective mode sounds dangerous. What's that around your neck? Did you lose a fight with a truck? It's a fish tie. It's professional. Prove to me it's not. Look, there's a murder to solve here. Are you gonna help me or not? Uh, no. We're just here to make sure the crowds don't get out of control. The non-existent crowds? Yep. Well then, keep up the non-existent work. Trash can in the playground. The typical bully's endgame. No crying children or other useful evidence in there at the moment. Still keeping up that top-notch police work, I see. Why don't you just leave the police work to the professionals, huh? Yeah, if we find any stray dog poop that needs collecting, we'll let you know. A woman's shoe. Aqua colored. No! Periwinkle. Got a scuffed heel. Might have belonged to the victim. It appears to have bite marks on it? Like it's been chewed. I may have to question the children to see if any of those knee biters were biting below the knee today. and before you know it, you're puking your guts out in a spiral while a bunch of other poor saps just stand there watching, waiting for their turn. Oh, there's something up there, just out of reach. Could be evidence. Looks like a purse. Might be related to the crime. Maybe I should tell someone about it. used to be a great place to catch some shut-eye until the internet made those free blankets obsolete. Whoa, fancy dog collar. This thing must have cost a pretty penny. Where's the pretty dog? We didn't find a dog. Uh, maybe there is no dog. This thing looks brand new. Maybe it was a gift? It's like they say. Never look a gift dog in the mouth. No one says that. Hmm, there's an inscription on it. Congratulations on your promotion. That's an odd thing to congratulate someone with. I remember we had one of these at my elementary school. I got caught playing murder on the Orient Express with Libby Wilson. We both got a week's detention. Totally worth it. Hey, you've got unusually long arms. Will you uh, help me get a thing out of a tree? It might be evidence. No, sir. I've got to stay right here and make sure no one messes with the dead body. Sorry. Hey, I think I saw a spider in that tree over there. Ah! Spider! That's all for now. I'm gonna go look for more evidence. Is this the victim's purse? It might be. We didn't see it earlier. I'm saying if it's not yours, can I have it? It's a pretty nice purse. It goes nicely with my hat. No, it's evidence. It's empty anyway. Seen enough? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this is no suicide. Huh. If you say so. I just need to get back to my office so I can analyze the evidence. 
Anything else you can tell me? Well, I, uh, I can tell you that I enjoy long walks on the beach and candlelit jello baths. About the crime scene? Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, no. How would that even work anyway? Do you mix the jello in the tub and then just wait for it to gel around you? Or, or, or do you make it first and then get in? God, please, do not answer any of these questions. I want to further examine the dead body. Go ahead and send it back to the morgue. I'll meet with the coroner there. We go way back. Right. Who are you again? I'm a detective. Once you've seen enough crime scenes, you'd think they'd get easier to stomach. But it's just the opposite. Each one adds a layer of grime until you can feel the grit on your teeth. This time it was the literal grit of pea-soaked playground sand, and there wasn't a toothbrush in sight. From here I could either head back to my office to analyze the evidence or visit the morgue and inspect the dead body. I decided to head over to stiff storage before returning to my office. Best to see what other evidence there was to discover while the body was still fresh. Mmm, mmm, fresh. Hello, Mac. How's tricks? The tricks are for kids, you know that. And around here it's Dr. Stuffins, got it? Whatever you say, Mac. They told me you were hanging around the crime scene. What kind of case have you scraped up from the bottom of the barrel this time? I'm investigating a murder. When I asked where I could find the stiff ones, they sent me to your mom's house first. Charming as ever. What do you want here, Nick? I want to take a look at the body from the playground. See if I can find any more clues. I'd love to help, but see those cops outside? They don't like PIs around their unsolved cases, and that means trouble for you. Well, I can answer any questions you have, but I can't let you near the body unless you get rid of the officers. Fair enough, I'll deal with the cops later. But first, I need to ask you a few morgue questions. Oh no, Nick, no puns this time, please. You know how much I hate puns. Ah, oh, where's the pun in that, Mac? So what was the COD? Maybe our playground pal here choked on a sandwich? Was that a pun? No, of course not. Better not have been. Anyway, the victim appears to have been dead before she was buried. No evidence of a struggle. My guess is she was suffocated in her sleep. The body must have been moved to the playground after the fact. Was there any bruising on the body? Signs of abuse? Now, whoever did this must have caught her off guard. Wasn't a fencer then, they catch you on guard. I said no puns. That wasn't a pun, it was a metaphor. You mean those people who fight bulls? Ah, oh, yeah, sure. Can you tell how long she's been dead? Hmm. Based on the liver temperature and state of rigor, I'd estimate the time of death to be around 11 p.m. last night. 11's a little past my dead time. I guess we can assume whoever killed her was not a morning person. Okay, that was definitely a pun. No, never. Puns are against the rules. Hmm. <laughs> Did you find any additional evidence on the body? You know I'm not allowed to tell you that. Not with those cops nearby. But, if they were otherwise preoccupied, there's a good chance I could look the other way while you check over the body yourself. Well, I'm pretty sure I can find some way to keep him dead distracted. Alright, this is your last warning. No puns. Okay, Mac, relax. I'm done. Good. I need to finish the autopsy. Yeah, I hear it's a dying practice. Damn it, Nick, cut it out. You know these things don't translate well to other languages. Okay, that's all I got. For now. Good. Any more of your nonsense and I thought my head gonna pun splode. Mac, that's why you leave the puns to the professionals. Listen, Mac, you sit tight, make sure no one disturbs the body before I can look it over. I got some cops to distract. So this is where you keep the bodies on ice? Yes, and occasionally my lunch. The tricky bit is not getting the two confused. 
I guess Dr. Stuffins likes to weigh the body parts out of uh, morbid curiosity. Syringes, old rubber gloves, bloody gauze. Medical waste is gross. Oh no, these are just some souvenirs I picked up on my trip to New Jersey. These are probably for something repulsive, like prying rib cages open or extracting brain matter out through the nasal cavity. What? No, those are just fancy rulers for measuring things. Ah, oh, you're right. Don't sound so disappointed. Employees and corpses must wash hands before leaving morgue. I hate that I live in a world where people need to be reminded of this. Medical science has made great strides in brain transplant surgery lately. Autopsy tables. The cheap hotel bed along the journey to man's final destination. It's also the victim's last chance to shed themselves of any evidence of wrongdoing. Ah, and pass. Mustn't forget pus. Of course. How could I forget pus? Wow, Mac, you did an amazing job of getting all the sand off the body. Every time I hit the beach, I'm still finding grains hidden away in crevices for weeks. Crevices on my body. Still doing the murmuring thing? Yep, recording background chatter can get expensive. I suppose I'll go along with it then. Hey there, Bogey and Bacall. I'm Earl. <sighs> Who's Bogey? Shouldn't you two be out issuing traffic tickets somewhere? Shouldn't you be out rescuing a lizard somewhere? We're not letting you touch that body, Nick. Come on, how about a little professional courtesy here? Listen. We're gonna stand here and do our jobs for as long as that takes, even if we starve to death doing it. Which might happen if I don't get a candy bar or something soon. I know, Earl. I'm hungry too. But the job comes first. Same brand as the ones back in my office. One day they'll be filled with a back catalog of my solved murder cases. But for now, it's just where I keep my fish ties. Ooh, a police baton. I've always wanted one of these. Doc likes to keep his credentials where everyone can see. And one of these is a health code warning. A reminder that food is not permissible anywhere on the premises. Mmm, donuts! Hey! Can you guys break a 20? I don't have any change. Do you even have a 20? Ah, uh, I'll get back to you. Oh, that looks good. Hey, the break room is for employees only, as are the snacks. Take that. Well, that was rude. Mr. B. Sub Street, Steve. Uh, what's going on with my usual parking space? The meter's busted. Well, that figures. You going to work now, Mr. B? That's right, Street Steve. If you see anyone looking to have a crime solved, you send them upstairs, above the butter shop. You got it. <laughs> 
And you know what my finders fee is? Yeah, I know. Some of the hair of the bee that bit you. Huh? No, whiskey will be fine. I, I know, Street Steve. Hello, little buddies. Something on your mind, Mr. B? How's life treating you, pal? Everything okay? Uh, you know me. Next day's the same as the last. You hang in there. Things will turn around for you. Who's to say they haven't already? <laughs> you got me there, Steve. See you around, Steve. Okay, Mr. B. Good for a fast exit down a steep hill in the winter. Too bad this hot town's flat as a roadkill pancake. These are some pretty rare books. Ooh, I wonder if they have a Ben-Hur 1860 third edition with a duplicated line on page 116. I'm not going back there. That's the kind of place that chumps get mugged. I'm no chump. Everybody's a critic. The city's had this area under construction for years. I hope one day they actually raise the money to finish rendering it. I keep hoping they'll put in one of those all-night diners where a nighthawk like myself can grab an after-hours cup of joe. Coin slot is jammed. Steve, what did you do? I know you like to park in that space, so I try to make sure it's all paid up for you. I maybe got carried away. Well, now it's overstuffed and I can't use it. Sorry about that, Mr. B. <laughs> Say, you, you ain't angry, is you, Mr. B? I didn't mean to mess up your favorite parking space. That's all right, Street Steve. <laughs> In fact, I think you may have done me a favor. I done good. Well, that deserves a drink, don't you think? Hey, that rhymes. Oh, gross. They're all sticky. Why are they sticky, Street Steve? Oh, uh, maybe because I... No. Do not finish that sentence. My ability to live the rest of my life outside of a sanitarium relies on not knowing the answer. Hey, you sure are a funny one, Mr. B. Guys eat up, you deserve it. No, no, no need to thank me. You two just enjoy the donuts. Consider it a thank you for your impeccable service. I got rid of the heat. Can I inspect the body now? Sorry, didn't hear that. If you'll excuse me, I just need to step over here and clean up for a bit. There's some fibers here. They're all wrapped around a booger on her left nostril. These lips are sealed. No, literally sealed. 
Part of the coroner's job is to wire the jaw shut. Whoever killed her remains her secret. There's no visible damage to her feet despite the chewing done in the shoe. No sign of a struggle, nails are intact, and nicely manicured. I should get mine done. All right, I'm done here. Just need to go analyze the evidence back in my crime lab slash office slash love cave. You know, I could have just sent that information to your office. Well, as long as you're offering to deliver, uh, how about a medium pizza, pepperoni and salt? And uh, don't get it all mixed up with the DNA this time. Just get out of here before those coppers come back. See you around, Mac. With nothing left to find on the body, it was time to head back to the office and analyze what I've collected. Something on your mind, Mr. B? See you around, Steve. Okay, Mr. B. Insert two bits. One of these days I'm gonna find one of those 12 and a half cent one bit coins. And then maybe I'll get myself either a shave or a haircut. But not both, obviously. My office. It was the same beat up old studio that I've been holed up in forever. A single desk cluttered with past due bills. A bookshelf stacked with unread literature. A coat rack. One day my hat'll hang for good. But not today. Today there was work to do. Ah, uh, home sweet home. Holy crap! It's here! My mail order crime lab is here! Between this and the police scanner, I'm really coming up in the world. Yeah, that's actually a hat rack. Uh, I got it at a discount because the hotspot was mislabeled. Huh, these are actually fake hollow book spines that came with the shelf. I keep meaning to hide something cool behind them, but right now there's just hiding a lot of dust. Private investigating for dummies, gumshoeing for idiots, becoming a Seamus for complete morons. Jeez, if I'd actually paid for these, I might feel a little insulted right now. Mickey Spillane, Raymond Chandler, Agatha Christie, Ian Fleming, Dashiell Hammett. I should get some books by those guys. Picked up this ceramic goat statue in Chinatown. That reminds me of my last case, where my client was trying to kill all men for being disgusting, sexual, deviant pigs. Ah, and what a wreck she had, too. Pulling on one of these leads to a secret passage, but I'll never find it because I'm afraid I might pull out a book. It's not a real crab, it's counterfeit. When you press him, he spins. It's cute. I think I'll keep him with me in case I need something spinning in my pants. You won't find this gumshoe chained to a desk. I prefer to ankle it down to the local gin mill so I can keep an eye on the sunglasses. Best way to earn an easy buck. Ah, a classic. Stupid lamp. Hasn't worked in years. Mm, I know the feeling. My city was like a cesspit. Or possibly a cesspool. I don't know really what a cess is, but I think it's like that. I think it's like my city. I can put tiny objects or fluids in and get a bunch of information in return. Kind of like when I was undercover as a gigolo. Yep, it's urine. Gross. I'm still hoping it was egg yolk. Really should shower later. Natural fibers. I suppose that's better than being smothered by polyester. That rash of murders by leisure suit in the 70s was brutal. Fingerprint and DNA and... 
Cool. Now I can look up all the perps and pervs I want. Hmm. I wonder if I'm listed in here. Oh, yep. I forgot I did that. Delete. I can analyze recorded sounds, photos, and videos here. For an extra hundred bucks a month, I could have had unlimited streaming movies too. But that's how they get you. Animal saliva. Well, I guess that rules out the kids at the playground. They'll slip up someday. Nothing to match it to in the system. I should add the victim's fingerprints to the database by analyzing them and then see if these are a match. Just as I suspected, the victim does have DNA. Now I have something to compare other DNA samples against. The victim's name is Sia Later, female age 33. That's a start. Let's see what else I can dig up on her. Looks like she lived in a deluxe apartment in the sky downtown. Pretty swanky area. I was thinking about getting a place out there, but with my credit score, I only got approved to gaze longingly at the buildings from across the train tracks. Well, no big surprise. The fingerprints are a match for seal later. How her purse got up in a tree, we may never know. No new evidence to find here. I'll just hang on to this little photo for uh, detective reasons. Image search shows this collar was custom made for employees of a company called Woofin' It Down Dog Foods. The evidence was starting to paint a picture. A portrait of a dead woman found in a sandbox after being smothered to death in a different location. It wasn't a pretty picture. There was still too much canvas to be filled in. Luckily, I already got a couple of leads. The dead woman had a fancy apartment to explore. And what was her connection with the dog food company? I had everything I needed to get to work cracking this case wide open. Well, almost everything. Every good PI has a partner. Someone to come up with the wrong answers so that I, I can tell them the right ones. Someone to do the dirty work when I need to keep my hat clean. Spade had Archer. Sherlock had Watson. Jessica Fletcher had Webster. I can't be right. I think I must have dreamed that one. Anyway, I needed my very own companion. I decided to put out an ad in the local rag. It's a newspaper for you millennials. Oh, you don't know what that is either? I don't have time to explain it now. Look it up in the encyclopedia. Before long, the ad got a couple of hits. Emily Blackwater was a tough-as-nails ex-cop who doesn't follow the rules and only works alone. Name's Emily Blackwater. I'm a tough-as-nails ex-cop who doesn't follow the rules, and I only work alone. Yeah, then why are you applying for a sidekick position? Listen, unless you're my good-for-nothing desk jockey of a captain, I don't have to tell you nothing. Not that I tell him anything either, good-for-nothing desk jockey. Zachary Forsyth was one of those unofficial police psychics who claimed he could get into the mind of any murderer. Zachary Forsyth, eh? I gotta say, I... I don't really believe in psychic abilities. That's cool. I get it. It sounds like a bunch of made-up mumbo-jumbo. But it works, I swear. Plus, chicks dig it. They think it's cool. Being a private eye. Solving crimes. Real crimes. That's cool. Exactly. That's what I'm here for. To learn from you. What you do? Oh, it's so badass. I just want to be part of it. Yeah. It is rather badass. Maybe there is something to you. Let's... Let's start the interview? Sounds good. And then there was Walter Walterman. He's old. Like, uh, could have been a busboy at the Last Supper old. I gotta say, you're a rather unconventional candidate, but I'm not here to judge. If you can prove that you're right for the job, it's yours. Kid, I ain't had to prove anything since your grandpa was in diapers. Well, the joke's on you! My grandpa's still in diapers! Well, let's dive right in! I got a whole list of interview questions to ask, but... Since when did asking a lot of questions solve a mystery? Instead, I'll ask each candidate just three. After that, I'll know everything I need to know to make my decision. 
So, Emily, why should I hire you? Because without me, you'll blow this case, become a giant loser, find yourself drunk in an alley begging for nickels, and dying of mesothelioma. Oh, okay, that's oddly specific. But, okay. Uh, why should I hire you? Because I can connect to the bigger picture, see things most others can't. Well, with me bringing those connections to light, and you using that knowledge to solve crimes, you'll always be the smartest guy in the room. Ooh, I like appearing smart. Why should I hire you? Do what you want, kid. I'm not here to tell you your business. I just need a job. Man's gotta get paid, know what I'm saying? Uh, fair enough. What's more important, doing right or following the law? I don't give a damn about the law or doing what's right. I swore an oath. And if that's what it takes to get to the truth, then that's what I'll do, get it? Uh, not entirely, no. Uh, what's more important to you, doing what's right or following the stupid law? Neither. It's about following your heart. That's what got you here, isn't it? You're right. I didn't even train for this job. What's more important, doing right or following the law? You respect the law, kid. You got that? The law is what's right. That's why it's the law. Don't try to catch me up in a trick question. Very old school. By the book. Nothing wrong with that. What was your toughest case? Toughest case? Probably when I broke up that ring of drug dealers smuggling cocaine into the country through great white sharks. You ever tried to put handcuffs on a 1,200 pound tweaked out fish? I mean, once? Slippery bastards. What was your toughest case? A woman once tried to hire me to find her uncle's missing ceramic goat, but I just couldn't get any readings from that statue. It was like it was a fake or something. It was the only time my psychic abilities failed me. A goat? Yeah, probably for the best. What was your toughest case? My 1924 Walrus Grain Valise. Oh, that thing was indestructible. Only reason I survived the Dust Bowl. I, I understood the word bowl in that sentence. I had a hard choice in front of me. Three wannabe hard-boiled sidekicks ready to have my back in a bad situation. And maybe my front in a good one. I wish I could keep them all, but I knew I had to throw the smaller fish back in the sea. I was ready to choose my new partner. Walter, you're in. You're my new partner. Well, Merry Friggin' Christmas. Now put on your big girl panties and let's get to work, huh? I need to be home by 7. I don't have... Alright, so we'll swing by Forever 21, get you some big girl panties, and then get to work. Is there an option that doesn't involve me wearing panties? Nope. Come on. Let's get going. My newly hired sidekick and I made our way to the victim's apartment. The moment I entered, I felt out of place. This place was slick. Top of the line modern furnishings. Not a speck of dust to be found. I felt as if I were contaminating the joint just by looking at it. Okay, this is Miss Lader's apartment. We're looking for any clues that could lead us to her murderer. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Tell you what, I'll investigate how my ass fits this sofa. Uh, let's just focus on the evidence. Look around and don't put your lips on anything. This seems to be a log of a bunch of work meetings. It looks like recently our lunches have been booked solid. Yeah, lunch meetings aren't a thing. You're either having lunch or having a meeting. It's a slideshow or a salad. Budgets or burgers. Estimates or enchiladas. Okay, I get it. 
Chai, Cow, and Buttercup. Oh, cute little kitties. Is this how you solve murder cases? Fawning over cat pics? Anything could be a clue, Walter. I examine everything. <laughs> novice. It's been scratched open. And maybe animals tore into it for something to eat. But I don't see any animals around here. I wonder where the cats from the photos are. My new high-tech crime computer can analyze these little scratches. No crayon drawings, no magnetic poetry, no takeout menus. What kind of a twisted sociopath has a completely empty fridge door? Treats for the kitties. Unopened. Huh. Short. Stout. Here is the handle, and let me just check, uh, yep. There's the spout. This checks out. Uh, milk, eggs, cat food, flour. It's either a grocery list or a recipe for a terrible cake. Ah, Pinot Noir. How appropriate. Oh, gross! It's a dead rat! And it's all wet! Ew! Ew! Relax. In some cultures, it's considered good luck to find a dead rat in your soup. Wait, there's no soup. Yeah, y you better just leave it there. Uh, just a quick dab should do. Sia never got the chance to experience the big sleep in her own bed. Then again, I don't think I'd want to be caught dead in these bedsheet patterns either. Yep, that's a litter box. And no, I'm not digging through that. I made a solemn vow about sandboxes. I haven't been able to look at one of these the same way since I solved the case of Rub-a-Dub-Dub -dub, 30 Frogs in a Tub. Really ties the room together. Oh, thank God, she hangs her toilet paper properly in the over position in accordance with US patent number 4655888A. At least we know she's not a psychopath. Sink's clean and the counter's spotless. No signs of foul play here. Oh, just too bad, because I feel like I'd be having a lot of fun if I were an untitled kleptomaniac goose right now. When I look in the mirror, I see the mileage the years have put on me. Skin's a little thicker. Hair's a little grayer. Ears a little hairier. Still, this gumshoe hasn't lost his step. I lose my shoes, but uh, not a step. A key! Nah, it's probably worthless. Well, I'll take it. More shoes. Similar in style to the one found at the crime scene, only none of these are chewed. Mm, there's a safe here, but it needs a passcode. I should dust it for prints, just in case. I see a clean print, but it's pretty small.
Well, that's it. I think I've turned this place upside down. Guess we should head out. The evidence suggests that Seal Later was a busy single woman with cats who preferred non-chewed shoes, uh, makes terrible cakes, and keeps something hidden inside a bedroom safe. No signs of a struggle or foul play, apart from the dead rat. Did I mention the rat was also wet? Way worse. If you're done pussyfooting around, let's get moving. I got a colonoscopy later I need to, uh, loosen up for. Woofing it down dog foods. Combining inner office drama with the smell of stale dog food. Luckily, people are still buying this police scanner business, and they gave us access to the seventh floor. I was eager to check out Sia's workspace, and hear the office gossip her co-workers had to share. Time to question some suspects. I'll do the talking. You just follow my lead. Hi. Hey there! Teddy Novak. What can I do you for? Uh, we're investigating the death of Miss Seal later, and we'd like to ask you a few questions. What's your job here, Mr. Novak? I'm in charge of quality assurance in the flavor department. We ensure every kibble is a delightful burst of flavor. Mmm. Chicken and horse meat. So good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's supposed to impress me? You know how much dog food I've eaten in my life? When I was in the service, our supply guy tried to order K-rations, and we got K-9 rations instead. By the end of the war, I could chug a can of Alpo like it was a cold beer. Can you tell me what Miss Lader's job was here? Sia was in charge of marketing. Coming up with all the fun catchphrases, approving images for the products, that sort of thing. Just last week, she got to host a photo shoot with some puppies for a new dog food flavor. Lucky bitches. How well did you and the late Miss Later get along? Well enough, but she was always after me to clean up the kibble around my desk. She was always afraid someone would slip and get injured on the job. Ridiculous. Typical. I'd have handed her a mop and a bucket and told her to get to work. Whoa, Walter, that is... Uh, we, we do not... Wow. You think anyone here had beef with Miss Later? Beef? You mean like our great tasting beef and old puke medley? Top seller, five years running. No. Does anyone find her particularly irritating, like I'm starting to find you? Well, I know that Liddy was particularly peeved when Sia started having lunch meetings with the execs. Really ticked her off for some reason. You know what ticks me off? Clove cigarettes. Smoke a real poison, you damn hippie. Not some kind of grande pumpkin spice half-calf latte BS. That's all for now. Aha! Someone has hidden a bug in this plant. Wait, no, this is an actual bug. And it's bitten me. Probably gonna die. Damn it. Looks like someone had a big lunch today. Psst! Hey, come here a sec. The thing about that lunch is, Liddy ate it, but it's not hers. You might want to ask her about her habit of borrowing other people's lunches. Thanks, I'll do that. Dear Miss Later, we'll be faxing over the rest of the paperwork soon. Good luck and congratulations. I hate these fancy binders. Precisely organized, alphabetically, chronologically, in an ascending order of priority. I prefer the cram it all in a drawer until it doesn't open anymore method of paperwork management. It's always worked for me. Wait, it's never worked for me, but I still like it.
Hello, ma'am. The name's Nick Bounty. Can you spare a minute? We just want to ask you a few questions. Sorry, mister. I don't talk to cops. Oh, we're not cops. We're shepherds. Some of our sheep have wandered off. Oh, is that right? Do you always carry a gun to find lost sheep? They're bad sheep. All right, mister. They're bad sheep. All right, Mr. Bounty. You begin to interest me. Vaguely. Go ahead and ask your questions. What do you do here, Miss? Bombs. Witty bombs. I'm head of customer service. So I suppose if you shepherds ever need servicing, just give me a ring. Good to know, Dollface. Just to be clear, that was sexy talk, right? <sighs> I should have waited in a damn car. You spent your days working with Miss Later. How would you describe her as a woman? Well, as a woman, I'd say. She was a talented and hard-working woman. Everyone in the office liked her. But if I were a dog, I'd say... <coughs> Sorry. They encourage us to get into the mind of a dog. It helps us market the food. Oh, for fuck's sake, this damn hippie mumbo-jumbo. Excuse me? Listen. I'm not here to tell you what you can't do in the privacy of your own home. Not since that court ruling, anyway. Uh, do you know of anyone that might have had it in for Sia? Well, no. I, uh, no. No one. If you know something, you better come clean now. Well, Sia just recently got promoted to head of marketing here, and she deserved it, but... Teddy Novak was also up for the job. He might not have taken that so well. Knew a guy named Novak back in the war. Polish fella. Halitosis like the devil. Walter, how many times do I have to tell you to stop demeaning specific ethnic groups? I guess until you realize that I take advice like a rabbi takes a ham sandwich. I know you were stealing from your co-workers. Maybe Miss Later caught you stealing hers. That could be considered motive. No, it wasn't like that. All they have for snacks here is dog food, so I get hungry for real food all the time. So maybe I just borrowed people's lunch from time to time. Well, I don't think she ever caught me. But if she did, she never said anything about it. You know, where I come from, stealing a lunch is a crime punishable by death. You just remember that, Missy. Hi. I heard Sia got the promotion you were gunning for. That must have ticked you off, huh? Yeah, okay, I was mad. That promotion should have been mine. Guess she edged me out by introducing a new snack that tastes like other dogs' butts. I don't know how she sniffed that one out. But I didn't kill her. I don't know. It sounds like a motive to me. I assume you have a good alibi? Where exactly were you when Miss Later was killed, Mr. Novak? I was, um, at a party at the old Coronado Hotel. If that's true, then the hotel security footage should be able to verify that, right? Yes? Give me that footage. What do I look like? The Library of Congress? I mean, a little bit. Leftover cup of java, once warm and sweet, but now cold and forgotten, much like the victim. Personally, I like my coffee like I like my women, with a protective cardboard sleeve and a removable plastic lid. Ooh, and a word that may or may not be my name scrawled down the side. Wonder if this little guy has a name. I'm gonna call him Marlo. Ah, puppies. These must be pictures from the photo shoot Sia recently organized. There's a search engine open on Sia's computer. Looks like she was trying to look up somebody named Max Fakaname. No results. I bet I can do better with my own equipment. Damn it. 
locked. There's a note. See ya, I hear you got the promotion. I suppose congratulations are due, and of course I'll watch your cats. Again, Max says he'll help out too. Uh, P.S. The cats would need their treats, and they smell like dog butts. <laughs> butts. Of course, in my day, we weren't afraid to call them asses. But, uh, well, the fundamental principle is the same. I think I need to know who wrote this note. Maybe I can get some prints off it. I've seen enough. There's nothing else to learn here. Dug up a couple of potential suspects, though. Teddy the promotion Passover, and Liddy the lunch napper. Ah, who cares? They're both a couple of ass clowns. Besides, sometimes, when you want people to fess up to something, it's best to just line them all up and wail on one of them real bad. Doesn't matter if they actually did it, because uh, it'll put a scare into whoever did do it in a real hurry. What about the Geneva Convention? Is that some kind of cop show? I usually fall asleep halfway through, so yeah, never seen it. Let's just go. Today was as long as a 12-foot corn dog and twice as crummy, and I was down to the stick fully expected to be putting bad guys in the hole by now. Plus, I was starting to wonder if this whole sidekick thing was more trouble than it's worth. But I've still got evidence to analyze, and a case to solve. And I was nipples deep into this one. I got the surveillance video for you. Just don't ask me to hook up the VCR. That's for you young people. That's fine, Walter. You just make yourself cozy. Might take me a minute to get through all this evidence. I don't do cozy. When you've been through the stuff I've been through, you learn to sleep anywhere. Hell, I could sleep on that file cabinet over there if I had to. Half the time I'm terrified by you, and the other half, I want to be you. goo indicates it was recently in the sewers. Unsurprising. Still gross. Well, that's disappointing. The prints are just paw prints from one of Sia's cats. Those little buggers get everywhere. Aha! The print belongs to Sia's sister, Allie, later. And there's an address. I'll add it to my map. Okay, let's see what comes up for Max Fakaname. That's strange, nothing comes up on this guy. That's as if he doesn't exist. I wonder if maybe, possibly, almost inconceivably, he's using a fake name. Um, okay, what's this? Well, Teddy Novak's alibi certainly checks out. This guy can't separate work from play. Must be rough. <laughs> I said no puns. Stop spying on me, Doc! Let's go. Turns out the dead dame has a sister who was considerably less dead. Her home was the kind of a place that people who used to be rich bought to make them forget they're poor. It's all kept in the front, but gone wild and abandoned in the back. Some kind of horrible real estate mullet. This is the kind of home you read about in the stories. Stories that start with a dead chimp and end with a dead chump. I 
hoped I wasn't either of those. Are you Allie? Yes, of course. You know who I am. Everyone knows my name. Who might you be? Might be John Travolta in a bunny suit. What do you think? Name's Nick Bounty. Are you a fan? Are you here for an autograph? I'll get my feather and inkwell. No, I'm a private detective. I'm here about your sister. I see. I suppose you should come inside. Sit down. I'll have Max fetch you some tea. Max? Oh, Max! Bring us some tea, won't you? Now, what was it you said about my sister? Did she send you here to spy on me, learn the secret to my success? She always was jealous of my dance fame. Fame! I'm gonna live forever! What? Was I supposed to say something? Sorry, it's a conditioned response. I'm afraid your sister is dead. Dead? I suppose that means her name will be in all the papers. She always was the lucky one. Isn't that right, Max? Max? Ugh, where the devil has he gone off to? You don't seem too upset, Miss Later. It's Gator. I changed it when I got into showbiz. Little Alley Later was a nothing, but no one forgets a dancing Alley Gator. No, I imagine they wouldn't. Uh, listen, we have to take a look around your home, see if there's any clues we can use to find your sister's killer. Do you have a warrant? No, but I have a police radio. All legit detectives carry a police radio. It's pretty much a proven fact. And that lets you do anything you want? So far. Fine, just make it quick. Max is taking me out dancing tonight. I did mention that I was a dancer, didn't I? But of course, I'm sure you knew that already. I don't like it. There's something screwy about this thing. Take a look around and see if we can poke some holes in our story. I'll start here in the living room. I'll be in the head. The head? Are you going on a personal journey into your own tortured psyche? I'm taking a dump. What's the matter with you, jackass? I have a few more questions for you. So, Max, what can you tell me about him? He, uh, doesn't seem to be around. He probably just ran out to pick up his suit. He'll be back. He's my boyfriend. I met him a few months ago, shortly after my sister started working longer hours. I'm not sure she approves of him, but he's a wonderful man, and he treats me like a ballerina princess. He may be a little temperamental at times, but really all he wants is to cuddle. Cuddle? <laughs> Sounds like even you could take that guy in a fight if you had to. Oh, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me! Ugh, I take it back. I didn't find Sia's pets at her apartment, but a note I found at her workplace suggests you may be watching them for her. Yes, I agreed to watch them. Mischievous little creatures. Unfortunately, Max is just a tiny bit allergic, so I try to keep them in the spare bedroom. They go out through the window during the day sometimes, but they always wander back looking for food. Oh, they sound precious. What? You don't know everything about me. I like animals, and I ain't gonna apologize for it. So, your sister dies, and you go out dancing. One might find that behavior a bit strange. I understand how it might look, but dancing is a way for me to work through my emotions. Stick with bourbon, kid. It'll also make you sweaty and disoriented. So, just like dancing, but you can do it while crying in the bathroom. I love dancing. Check out these moves. Pick these up while I was infiltrating a Vogue house. Uh... Jabberwocky! Jabberwocky! 
I hope to God that's you having a stroke. Yes, those sure are some kind of moves. If Max is allergic to cats, why is he staying in the room where you say you keep the cats? Where Max sleeps is none of your business. But if you must know, he simply keeps his things in there. When he stays over, he sleeps on the couch. That's all for now. Ah, it's a Victrola secret model. Pure phonography. This place is like a shrine to Ali's past. Memorabilia from competitions long since celebrated. Photographs of days gone by, music from an era past. I might feel a little bad for her, except this poster glamorizes the electric slide and I just can't respect that. It's a legitimate dance. No, it is not! If the camera suddenly pans over to the fireplace, you know there's some sexy times going on. Chai, Cow, and Buttercup. Aren't those the names to see as cats? It's written on the cover. Nothing on the inside, but there is a page torn out. You should be able to run this through the old Bound computer and see if there are impressions left on the page beneath. Half of the fridge contains soy milk and health food. The other half is just beer, fish, and liver. I guess. Max and Allie are cohabitating. I wonder which one's the health nut. Nick stole the cookie from the cookie jar. Who, me? Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's a whole different case. Some old dance records, a ribbon from a square dance competition, some old hard candy I can't pry off the bottom. Nothing useful here. Bottle caps, bits of string, some cat toys, and some blood! Dance trophies, mostly for ballroom and ballet. Why couldn't it have been the Lombata? I'll tell you why, Mr. Bounty. It's because I could never find a partner who could keep up. It's because you hadn't met me yet. Nope, not going in there. Too many dolls. Too creepy. This picture represents the emptiness of existence as it envelops our everyday repetitive lives as we attempt to find meaning in nothing. Oh wait, no, it's just an empty picture frame. <laughs> My mistake. These appear to be blueprints for some kind of trench coat. Various measurements in here. Not much else, though. Windows nailed shut. There's no sign of the cats. This doesn't add up. Didn't Allie say they go out through a window during the day sometimes? Just an old black and white television. Or as I call it, a television. 
Covers are a little crinkled. Signs that someone was on the bed after it was made. Lots of men's trench coats. Assume these belong to Max, which suggests that he's staying here. These shoes are filthy! Where does this guy hang out? Ugh, it stinks too. It smells like a goose's taint. I don't know what I expected to collect in these swabs, but I never knew there were so many disgusting fluids in the world. A shoe tread is basically a fingerprint for feet. What, you want to investigate my ass? I have a few more questions for you. I don't see Sia's cats anywhere, and the window in the guest room is nailed shut. Well, they must have gotten out some other way. Really, there's no need to worry, Mr. Bounty. They come and go as they please. Or are you the kind of detective who tracks down missing felines? No, you are. Uh, I mean, no. There was blood in a drawer full of cat stuff. Has Max harmed those cats? Not that I really care. How dare you! He'd never hurt a fly. He's a gentle soul, unlike those beastly critters. I thought you liked the cats. They're my sister's cats. I take care of them because sometimes she's too busy. Too busy being successful? Are you insinuating something, Mr. Bounty? Maybe. Assuming insinuating means what I think it means. But if it's anything like knitting, I'm working on quite a scarf. That's all for now. Ah, there's Max now. Picking me up so we can hit the town. I hope I was able to help, but I'm afraid you both have to leave now. Max does not like to be kept waiting. Alright, but don't think about skipping town. You're still a suspect. I'm sure I'll assist you in any way I can. Sure. We can always use a little alley gator aid. I left a 20 on your bathroom counter. I, uh... Well, I think I broke something in there. Searching Ali's home led to some interesting new discoveries. Mostly revealing that dancing could potentially be way creepier than I thought possible. Allie wasn't exactly coming across like the grieving sister, and her story about Sia's cats wasn't adding up. And what about Max, the mysterious boyfriend? This whole thing was funkier than a Rick James album at double speed. Oh God, Walter! Take it like a man, it ain't gonna kill ya. Don't you dare roll down a window. Oh, that is foul. Hey, thanks for nothing back there, Walter. You didn't help at all. Trust me, kid. If I'd been around that dame for another two minutes, someone was gonna get shot. Well, fine, but if we're gonna be partners, you need to help out more. I am helping, kid. Now, don't you have some evidence to analyze? Looks like the goo in the shoe is bird crap. Lots of bird crap. Analyzing the chemical makeup of the crap reveals large quantities of sodium chloride and shittisan commonly found in shrimp shells. So, these are seabirds. My guess? Seagulls. Sky rats of the beach. There are a few fishing marinas in the area. 
I can always tap into their surveillance cams and see if anything interesting turns up. the system for this blood. My guess is that it belongs to either Allie or Max. Or one of the cats. Or someone else entirely. Ah, the Bount computer comes through. Uh, someone wrote a bunch of numbers on the page above this one. If you add them all up, they equal 42. Not important, but still a fun fact. Italian brand work shoe. Seems to be a gravel-like substance in the tread. Not really sure what I'm looking for. Again, let's take another look around. That's locked. There's a slip of paper here. Just says El Pescado. Found everything we can. We're done here. Interesting turns up. El Pescado is the name of a fishing boat. Finally, I've got a new lead. Well, whoopty freaking do. What's the problem, Walter? I'm bored. All this walking around people's homes like we're damn real estate agents. And the talking, my god, yep, yep, yep. That's what a detective does. You don't hold a candle to the private dicks in my day, kid. Those were tough guys who did all their talking with their fists. Real detectives. But I am a real detective. In my day, we'd get down in the filth and the muck to get things done. Fine. You want filth? Go follow up on the dead rat lead in the sewers. There's plenty of muck there. That's a sewer side mission and you know it. Well, yeah, it's not the main mission, so it's sort of a side mission. In the sewers. Sewer side mission, if you will. You'll love it. Fine. You go do your little tippy-toeing around, and I'll take on the real dirty work. I had higher hopes for you, kid. <sighs> this is ridiculous. Partner or not, I need to get down to that marina while the lead's still hot. Something on your mind, Mr. B? How are your little pigeon friends today? Hungry. These guys never get enough to eat. So... You share your own food with them? A fed bird is a happy bird. See you around, Steve. Okay, Mr. B.
Hello, little buddies. I didn't like splitting up with my partner, but some things are better accomplished alone. Like finishing off a case of Zima and binge watching New Girl. Nobody wants to be a part of that. Why did Sia have the name of this boat locked away in a safe? What was Allie's new boyfriend Max doing out here? The answers have got to be inside. This boat reminds me of the time I got stuck on the Amazon River chasing down a bunch of gun-running guinea pigs that were eventually eaten by Peruvians. Ah, good times. Nondescript wooden crates. I assume these were placed here by top men. Ha! Aw, oh, man. I was hoping these crates would bust open and reveal a bunch of gold coins. Or a one-up. Video games lied to me again. No bundles of drugs. No hidden stowaways or dead bodies. What kind of abandoned rowboat is this? Crates in the docks always remind me of the time I broke up a counterfeit crab ring. With the help of a real crab I like to call Herbie. I'm sorry I threw you into the fat man's pants, Herbie. Peace, little buddy, wherever you are. Well, hello, Mr. Seagull. Look, a toy crab! Aw, the toy crab scared him away. You must be starving. Hey there, Mr. B. Say, have you been down near the docks today? Matter of fact, I have. What clued you in? Well, you got bird crap on your shoulder, and you smell like dead fish. You're a pretty good detective, Street Steve. You got a good nose for clues. I'm amazed that you can smell anything from what's going on uh, around you. Thanks. By the way, were you expecting a client tonight? Client? No, I can't say I was. Why? There was a, a woman hanging around here while you were out. When I asked if she was looking for you, she just ran off. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks, and good looking out. Something on your mind, Mr. B? Hey, can I, uh, have whatever it is you're feeding these pigeons? I'm sorry, Mr. B, but birds gotta eat, you know. I can't just ignore them when they look up at me with their hungry little faces. See you around, Steve. Okay, Mr. B. Watch out, pigeons. A deadly crustaceans on the loose. <coughs> Fly away, birds. Be free. Well, that was fun.
Hey, one a quarter? Thanks, Mr. B. That's awful nice of you. Something on your mind, Mr. B? So, uh, now that there are no birds, how about handing over that food? Well, why do you want a bunch of crumbled up stale french fries? Never question a man's snack of choice, Steve. Fair enough. Here you go. See you around, Steve. Okay, Mr. B. I'm not trying to hurt you! Leave me alone! Dinner time! Come and get it! Nothing but paw prints. Who lets their pets walk all over the table? That's just unsanitary. May as well collect all the evidence I can find. Not a lot of leg room. If someone is sleeping here, it must get pretty cramped. All scratched up. Animals, probably. Or children. It's just full of empty tuna cans. Oh, looks like someone tried to burn some papers in here. If I touch it, it'll crumble to ash. But I can snap a picture. Oh, yuck. Come on, there's a toilet right there. Why would someone piss all over the floor? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Never go on a boat unless you can pee with wobbly legs. Why am I still swabbing pee? Why? Someone's been through here. There was definitely something fishy about El Pescado, but whose boat was this? Max? Allie? Sia? Hopefully, analyzing the evidence will point me in the right direction. Time to head back to the office. Sounds like Steve. He's not here. Where is he? Steve, are you back there? Hello? Stay put. I'm coming. Steve? I'm coming, buddy. Uh-oh. You're not Steve. Hello. My name's Tim. I'm here to beat you up. But I don't even know you. Oh wait, are you the guy from the dry cleaners? Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know you were supposed to tip. No, a stranger offered me a hundred bucks to rub up anyone coming back here with a bad hat and a fish on their chest. I'll have you know this is a damn fine hat. Let's do this. Great! Easy money! Ha! Oh! Just old garbage bags. Nothing I can use as a weapon in there. If I were 20 feet tall, I might be able to use this as a weapon, but I'm not. 
Buddy blow. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> Ow. Okay, I can do this. I just gotta remember my gigolo training. Hiya. <laughs> That was a lucky shot. Let's see, okay. Float like a beaver, sting like a butterfly. Here we go. Nominate Padre! I got something for this. Uh, something something electric slide. Uh, no. Uh, no uh, something something real life wire. No. Uh, something electric personality. <gasps> Wait! I've got it! Yeah. Uh, is that you, Steve? I feel your pain, literally. Nothing. Steve, are you back there? Get back here, you filthy animal! Nick, is it you? Street Steve, you're okay! What happened? I don't know. I was just polishing my skis when somebody jumped me. Yeah, they got me too. I took out the big guy, but somebody got me from behind. I feel like I was hit with a surprise grand jeté. It was that ballerina again? I don't think so. Whoever it was hit me really hard. Never underestimate the power of ballet, Steve. You're gonna be okay? Yeah, I uh, think so. But uh, just in case, I think I'm gonna hang out on a different street corner for a while. Good idea. Well, I gotta get back to solving this case. Thanks for helping me, Mr. B. Good luck, Steve. Poor Steve. Guess not everyone can stay one step ahead of the enemy. Luckily, I... You always talk to yourself so much, Mr. Bounty. Alligator. If you think that was verbose, you should hear my inner monologues. How'd you get in here? I'm a dancer. Yeah, that doesn't really explain... I'm here to ask you to stop your investigation into my sister's death. And what do I get out of this little deal? What do you want? Money? Power? What I really want is waffles. Every morning, served to me in bed. Can you arrange that? Probably not. Then I can't do what you're asking. Mr. Bounty, I'm not asking. But you just said you were asking. Then I've changed my mind. Ah, I see. Tell me, who roughed up Street Steve? Did Max do it? I... I don't know. I think you do. Your sister is dead, Miss Gator. And you don't want to do anything about it? Please, just leave us alone. I won't warn you again.
Well, that was, uh, something. Okay, back to work. Yep, it's piss. Urine is basically a fingerprint for the genitals. It matches the urine that was found in the sandbox where Sia's body was found. It's either incredibly disturbing or this killer simply needs to pens. Same as the paw prints on Sia's safe. Might make a cute emoji. similar to the scratches in the bag of dog food in Sia's apartment. So many scratches and chew marks. Is it all the same animal? Computer enhance more! Oh, these are adoption papers for a dog. Sia was going to adopt one of the puppies from her photo shoot. Looks like she never got the chance. Two prints from the boathouse match Max's shoes from Allie's apartment. I think that makes Max our prime suspect. Hmm, something isn't adding up. The evidence all points to Max, but why would Max want Sia dead? There doesn't seem to be a motive. And also, what were Sia's cats doing at the boathouse? Did Allie bring them there? If so, why? Are they sailors? Mr. Bounty, I know you're there. It would be in your best interest to respond. You're not the police. <laughs> no. Well, if you're calling to take my order, I like black olives, anchovies, and extra salt in my pizza. And it better be here in 30 minutes or less, or I'm gonna get real crabby! Ah, cut the crap. You know this is Max. I know you my boat. Max? I'm sorry, can you repeat the last bit? It's really hard to hear you. I said I know you've been snooping around my boat. I'm warning you to your investigation, or something unfortunate might happen to your partner. You're playing Fortnite with a panther? I said I'll kill your sidekick. I'm sorry, there's just so much noise on your end. Are those bees? Yes, someone is removing a beehive. Don't worry about that. Maybe you can move to a quieter area? It's just really difficult to understand you. Well, maybe you can understand this. Whoa. Say something. No. Are you serious? I have a gun to your head. <sighs> Fine, whatever. Listen closely. Yeah, you want to save your partner's life. Meet me at the uh, tonight, 8 p.m. Fail to show. And that did. Wait, meet you where? I couldn't get any of that. Well, this is not good. Not good. Luckily, the old Bount computer was recording the whole conversation. Maybe I can clean up the audio. See if I can isolate Max's voice. Listen closely. If you want to save your partner's life, meet me at the Cafe La Chatte tonight, 8 p.m. Fail to show, and they're dead. Cafe La Chatte, 8 p.m. I'll be there. Ballerina slipper. It's not glass. It's not chewed. Let me just scrape the inside and add to my collection of disgusting juices. belongs to Alligator. No surprise there.
There's a Steve-shaped butt imprint on the boxes, but no Steve. Everything was suddenly all too clear. Max killed Sia and kidnapped my partner to ensure I kept my mouth shut about it. But when someone takes your partner, you're supposed to do something about it. It doesn't make any difference what you think about them. They're your partner, and you're supposed to do something about it. And as it turns out, I rather like my partner, and I'm not gonna let him take the fall on my account. I'd track Max to the ends of the earth if that's what it took. But thankfully, it didn't. This drive was only about as long as this monologue, so I saved a lot on gas. Walter! Hang on, I'm coming to get you. You're not going anywhere, Mr. Bounty. I warned you to stay away. No, you actually told me specifically to come here at this time. Well, okay, yes, and now that you're here, I'm warning you to stay away. No one is going anywhere. See, now she told me to stay away. You just have no idea what's actually going on. No, but I do know. I figured out exactly who killed Sia. Max is the murderer, and I can prove it. The pea found at the playground was the same pea found on the houseboat near Max's bird crap encrusted shoe prints. It practically puts Max at the scene of the crime. The evidence, like my hips, don't lie. You didn't do a very good job of covering your tracks, at least not for me. Sounds like you've done your homework. That's right, and now you're coming with me. <laughs> I don't think so. You're going to let me out of here and stop pursuing this case, or I will activate the laser mounted to the ceiling and let it wreak havoc on your partner. You so much as twitch and I got a bullet with your name written on it in curly letters with a heart emoji. Besides, despite the fact that you've been trying to hide your identity this whole time, I know who you really are. Max is actually... Sia's own cats. Chai, Cow, and Buttercup. On the outside, three perfectly Instagrammable kitties. But on the inside, they were greedy, jealous, and without remorse as house cats usually are. So, when Sia decided to adopt a puppy, they decided on revenge. So they plotted together to disguise themselves as a human and befriend Allie in an attempt to create a false identity. Then they bought a houseboat to have a place to live after Sia was gone and attempted to destroy any record of puppy adoption to hide their motive. With everything in place, they simply suffocated Sia in her sleep with their furry bodies since they no longer had anyone's pillow to put the carcass on. They just dragged it to the first litter box they could find that was big enough for it to fit. I realize that it makes no sense, but that is what happened. Wait, this is real? You're a cat? Three cats, actually. We're all together in this. Okay, I'm out. Allie? Nope. Sorry, you know what? This is dumb. Who writes this crap? Hang on, you're actually leaving? There's more lines to record. Yeah, Mark, I'm leaving. I really, I, I can't do this. I don't actually know why I'm here. The script makes no sense. Just a bit of silly fun, come on. Uh, do you actually, like, know who I am? I'm Melissa Hutchison. I voiced f***ing Clementine, okay? I don't have time for this trash. So, I'm out. Sorry. Bye. Uh, okay. This is okay. Uh, hey, can, can you make sure you just edit this out in post? You got it. Moving on. Allie, wait! Now look what you've done! Let's see how you like losing someone you care about! Don't worry, I'll find some way to turn this thing off. 
It's okay, kid. Don't spend as many years as I have in this biz and not learn a few things. When Max was putting in the access codes for the laser, <laughs> I saw the code he punched in. Ah, oh, thank God. Where's the access panel and what is the code? Well, see, now that's the problem. My mind ain't what it used to be and, uh, yeah, I, I can't remember. What? Now is not the time for you to lose your memory, Walter. What are we gonna do? What I've been telling you to do this whole freaking time. You're gonna have to go old school. You mean... Night school for senior citizens? Uh, is there a place you can go to learn how to be old? No. I mean, you're gonna have to beat it out of me. What? I can't do that. Look, sometimes when a perp has information he won't give up, you have to rough him up a little. And it just so happens that this time, I'm the perp. You're my partner. You wanna be a real private dick? You gotta get your hands dirty. Come on, kid. We're running out of time here. Okay. I'll try. Give me those codes or else, Buster! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta do better than that, kid. Maybe Walter just needs a hit of whiskey. I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't remember. Keep it coming, kid. You're on the right track. This might be useful. Maybe this'll jog your memory. I got nothing. I can't keep doing this to you! Don't give up, kid. All right, mister, you asked for it. Ah. Oh, oh. <coughs> okay, okay, I got it. 17, 21, the four. Got it, we did it. I knew you had it in you, kid. Now go access that pen. It's locked. I'm not getting any money out of there without a fight. Come on, man. Pick up the pace. Well, it didn't open, but it moved. I got a quarter! Oh, there's an access panel here. I just need to put in a code and shut down the laser. Punch in the code. Running out of time, kid. I'm on it. I'm on it. <sighs> Thanks, kid. You really saved my bacon. Yeah, and it turned out to be a lot of fun. Sorry about the beatdown. Ah, that was nothing. Barely felt a thing. I think you finally learned that it takes more than a police radio to be a real private dick. I guess I did. Thanks, Walter. So what's next for you, old man? Well, I think I'll... What the hell? It's the backup generator, damn it! How do I shut it off? Look, kid, I'm sorry, but there's no time. This is it for me. No, 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 this can't be how it ends! It was good working with you, kid. Walter! No! What the? Ah, for shit's sake, it's just a laser pointer. So you're not dead? Not yet, but I'll be fine. Now you get out of here and stop those damn cats before it's too late. I'm on it. Damn cat!
going to regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. And for the rest of your, uh, nine times three is 27 lives. Damn cats have a getaway car. Under other circumstances, this would be adorable. And amazing. It looks like it's not securely shut. Hang on, why does that cat have a gun? Come on! Ah, can't shoot me if he can't see me. Cats hit sticks, right? Pretty sure I read that somewhere. Maybe I can annoy him with this. just sleeping. They're on fire! It's a warm nap. They're fine, I'm telling you. But... It's okay, kid. It's all over now. We got them. I can't believe I'm saying this, but nice job, Nick. I mean, it's still an animal case, though. You know that, right? Ah, damn it! Uh, the cats, uh, are they okay? Just sleeping, right? Yeah, of course. And, uh, about that nonsense? About you still working animal cases? Who cares? Cats, humans, retail employees, it don't matter who commits the crime. It takes hardcore detective work to bring them down, baby. Yeah, I am hardcore. Let's go get some frozen yogurt to celebrate. Yeah, I don't think so, kid. If I hear someone utter the word fro-yo, I'm liable to commit murder myself. Any available law enforcement, please report to a disturbance in the South District. Reports of people spontaneously believing they are chickens. Well, at least they only think they're animals. A job's a job, kid. I'm game for serving up a couple knuckle sandwiches. What do you think? I think it's the stuff dreams are made of. Huh? As a private investigator, you take the cases you can get usually means long nights following scumbags to sleazy motels and taking photos too distasteful even for TMZ.